Welcome to Someone Stole My Laundry, the podcast where we dive into quirky, unexpected, and downright fascinating aspects of life. Join me as we explore the pulse of our city, unravel the latest YouTube trends, and peek through the windows of high-end boutiques, even when our wallets protest. Plus, we'll uncover hidden gems and thrift stores that just might change the world. Tune in for a delightful blend of curiosity, humor, and everyday adventures. So, this week on Someone Stole My Laundry, what we're doing is we're talking about thought-provoking questions, and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually answer six thought-provoking questions. And I think this is something that I'm going to do every Wednesday. So if you like the series, then let me know. So the first question is, do you believe in second chances? And I would have to say, I do. I think that every person deserves a second chance at life. I think that second chances are very important. It actually builds character. It uh, builds morale. And it shows the universe and it actually shows humanity that we all have hearts. One thing that I've noticed is that In certain spaces, people won't even give you a first chance. And what I mean by this is that people often judge you on information that other people are telling them, other people's experiences with you, or something that they read online, and they don't actually hold space for you or give you an opportunity to actually show that you are a person who deserves a second chance, if not the first one. And I think that this has to do with confirmation bias because some people hold on to their their opinions, their perceptions, and sometimes those stereotypical beliefs that they have about either you or someone like you. And I just think that that is quite unfortunate. For example, I have been in a number of countries and I can just say that in a couple of countries that I've been to, uh, such as, of course, well, I don't have to name the name, but I'll just give you the experience is that sometimes people won't even give you a first chance. And there are times when you try and make yourself available for discussion and dialogue and you're giving people access to you to actually answer some of those hard questions that they may have about you or or, or, or to clear up some of those misconceptions that they have about you and to, to create space and ask questions. And what I discovered is that in most instances, people don't use this time and space to actually ask you questions that would actually bring clarity to misinformation or disinformation or misconceptions. They actually tend to look for evidence that supports their position that maybe you fit into this stereotype or that you fit into these uh, tropes. So that's what I've discovered is that sometimes people will not even give you a first chance. I think everybody deserves a second chance. We're all human. We're all, uh, you know, imperfect. We make mistakes. And I don't think that most things are warrants cutting off people for you know a lifetime or not even allowing them to speak and tell their side of the story i think it's important for us to listen to other people's side of the story to actually get uh, more information because i think that when we hear uh, just only one side of the story we tend to uh 
we tend to really miss out on a lot of useful information. And that's what I discovered is that people will only hear one side of the story. They will actually sit down for two sides of the story and to try and make sense of the entire picture that they will only take one inside the story and say, okay, that is what I'm choosing to believe. You know, it's this confirmation bias that, you know, plagues humanity. And and I just wish people would do better. And I think that everyone deserves a chance. This is a, a part of humanity is to be able to grow, to, to evolve and to develop in our behavior and our thinking. And I just wish that there would be more people that would allow people to grow. Okay, for the second question, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? So if I could live anywhere in the world, I think I would live in the country Canada. Canada is such a phenomenal country. There is a lot of warm, and I mean like the, there's warm hearted people in Canada. There's a sense of community. And if you know, if you don't know this about me, I'll tell you, I'm not actually a cold weather person. And so in Canada, the weather is super cold. It's like the coldest country that I've been to thus far. And you have to layer up. I mean, you have to wear multiple layers, even snow boots. With a winter jacket, it's a very cold country. Like the, 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 the cold in Canada gets to your bones. But there is always something to do in Canada. There's like these different communities in Canada that is just worth visiting. Like they have like uh, little little uh, Italy and little little Asia, and they have like these different communities where you can just go and taste delicacies and different types of food. And there's always it's just this loving feeling. When I was in Canada. For the most part, everyone treated me with respect and it was just a country that I felt like it was home for me. And it just, I felt like that was where I was supposed to be. When I first went to Canada, I said, this is where I'm supposed to be. Like, this is my home. I felt so comfortable even though there was some setbacks in Canada I felt close to that country I felt like that was like you know my, my homeland it, and again the people there are so nurturing and special and there's always a room for conversations and I mean in Canada there's always these room for thought-provoking conversations I can remember a number of instances and situations where people were always open to have a conversation. And I think that that's quite different in Europe because, and, th and that's not to say that you can't have a thought provoking conversation in Europe. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that in Canada, there is room to do that a lot more. So for example, if you are walking down the street, there is people always holding debates on the street in Canada and there's room for conversation. And then there's uh, room for debate in societies, uh, uh, in clubs that are created outside of university. And then there are focus groups that allow you to actually have, sit down and have a conversation. And I think that that's why in Canada that there is a, a greater sense of community in that country. and. Uh, I, I think that that is why there is people tend to communicate more is because there are these open spaces to actually have dialogue. And I just think it's just a wonderful country. It's a country that I, I would want to live in again. So yeah, so if I could live anywhere in the world, I probably would live in Canada. I haven't been all over the world, but uh, with the countries that I've been to, it would probably be there. Okay, so next question. What's one thing you wish you knew? Or with, what is one thing you wish you knew how to do? I wish I could sing. And I'll tell you, 
I love it when people sing. It doesn't matter what songs they're singing. I just think that singing is such a beautiful gift. For example, I live in Belfast and there are these two men and I think that they're from South America or Central America, but I always see them in the city center and they, I, I see them sitting down on a bucket. Uh, they're, well, one of these, one of the men, they're sitting on a bucket and he's tapping the bucket and he has like such this like amazing voice. And I'm inclined to say that there's times where I've seen him sing without a microphone and his voice carries. And that's another thing that I like about people who sing is that their voice actually can carry across the room. And that's something that I wish that I, I, I could do. I wish that I could sing. And I noticed that some people sing, they sing so beautifully that it brings tears to your face. And it's not because you're sad or the, the music is sad, but it's just because it's so beautiful and uplifting or it's touching the heart or it's touching the soul. And it's really something that I wish I was able to do. Do you ever experience secondhand embarrassment? So when I chose this question, I am thinking that it that it is asking me if I am embarrassed about buying secondhand clothing or secondhand uh, household items, etc. And if that's what the question is asking, I would say, no, I don't ever experience secondhand embarrassment. I don't feel ever embarrassed about being in a secondhand store. I've actually been in very high-end stores as well as secondhand stores. Uh, I've, I've also been in kind of, if you know, in the United States, there's those Goodwills where you can actually go in there and there's certain good wills where you have to actually dig through and and try and find like treasures and i've actually really enjoyed that experience so do i regret i mean do i ever have secondhand embarrassment no i i actually love secondhand clothing and this is one great thing about the united states uh and, and of course uh there's certain secondhand stores across Europe. So for example, uh, I, I remember in Sweden, there was this one secondhand store that always, it was huge <laughs> and it always had like really good stuff in there. And I can't remember the name of it, but it, it was, you, you could, you could, uh, you know, you, you could, create your own wardrobe from a secondhand store in Sweden. I can't even think of the name of that. It starts with an M, but it's, it's I think, one of the biggest, and it's only one in Sweden, but it's a big secondhand store. And uh, so, no, I, I don't ever feel embarrassed about wearing or buying secondhand items. Uh, I've actually seen people put together an outfit that looks very good and it's secondhand. And for me, I don't think that it looks bad at all. So no, I don't ever have secondhand embarrassment. Is there someone for everyone? Of course, I would argue that there is someone for everyone because this is a vast planet with a lot of love to give. It's a, it, it's a vast planet that you know, no one's going to go without love. I, I can't imagine any person in this world going without love. Hey, listen, there have been multiple stories and we've seen documentaries of these people who have committed horrendous offenses and have served lifetime in prison and uh, some, sometimes some people are on, you know, won't ever get out and they develop a following of, of people who want to be in a relationship with them. So I think that if these people can find love, it's you and I can, can find love as well. I think there's someone for everyone. 
And I think that there is a connection that you'll find, that, that we'll all find, our soulmate, our twin flame. I think that there is someone who is going to be in sync with us in this universe and someone that's going to want to share our experiences and love us for who we are. Yes, I think that there is someone for everyone. What are some major green flags when dating someone? I would have to say that some major green flags are someone that always has your back. So they don't always have to agree with your arguments or your positions or your uh, the position that you're holding in that moment, but they're always going to have your back to support you against the tidal wave, right? So say for instance, there's a group of people that are going up against you and then you have this person that is always going to have your back. I think that that is a, a green flag is where, where sometimes people can see and they can see the good in you to support you and and to always have your back uh, through thick and thin and and this is they're not fair weather you know sometimes there's only people there that are there when it's good times they're only there when you know there's a party going on or there's there's a good time but they're not there for you when there's hard times and i think it's important when people have your back up against, when your back is up against the wall. And I think that when you find that people, so for example, you're, a lot of people have hundreds and hundreds of Twitter followers and social media followers. And sometimes none of those people will have your back and only a small group will. And I think it's very important that we as humans that are that's navigating this world learn who those people that truly have our back and have our best interests at heart i think another green flag is loyalty and it it ties in with a person that is having your back a person who is loyal to you is something it, is a green flag because it shows that that person has a special place in their heart for you. So I think that that's a green flag when dating someone. I think another green flag when dating someone is there's a, it's difficult to explain, but if you're an adult and you've been in a long-term relationship or you've, you've been, you've gone through like this dating uh, courting phase, there is a look that a person that you're dating will give you. And sometimes like you could be like reading a book or washing the dishes or sweeping the floor and they look at you, you look at, at them and there's just this, this love in their eyes. So for example, their pupils dilating. I think as adults who've been in dating and uh, you know, been in love we know exactly what that look is i think i've actually in my entire life i've experienced that twice I, once when i was dating a man in the united states I, I dated him for i think like a year and then the second time is where i dated a man uh, in the republic of ireland so i think with all so i've dated my fair share because of course you know i'm in my 40s so but i think that with all these men that i've dated i think that there were two that i've actually seen this really look of care genuine uh admiration and uh infatuation within their eyes um what's another green flag I think another green flag, this is probably going to be the last uh, one, I think when dating someone is when someone allows you to speak without interrupting. And now, and I'm not talking about when you're in a heated exchange or a heated argument, or when you're in a debate or there is a subject that you're both passionate about and you're like, you're, I think that that's very uh, interesting, but I think 
when you're dating someone, like when you're going on date one, date two, and date three, and you're sitting down with someone and you're having a conversation about a topic and you're talking, a person that will give you eye contact, listen to you, is something that I think is very beautiful. So that person is not like scrolling through their phone. They're not uh, looking around at, at other uh, spaces or, you, you know, they genuinely seem interested in what you're talking about and uh, wanting to actually develop the conversation, move the conversation forward. And they ask questions to, to keep the conversation going. I think that that is a green flag. And have I had that happen before? So I have to be honest to tell you that I have never had that happen while I was in a relationship with someone, but I have had that happen outside of relationships. For example, when I was in Canada, I was in the library and I met this guy and just so happened we sat across from each other. And I think I was waiting to use the computer. There was something that I was I was doing, but I think it was that I was waiting to use the computer or uh, reading a book or something. And he just sparked up conversation and we just started having a conversation. And he really asked me some thought provoking questions. And this, it, it was questions that made me really feel in sync with his energy. Although of course we were not dating, but it was a kind of communication and a conversation that uh, made me feel like, okay, wow, this felt, this felt like a soulmate experience. Although it wasn't, it was just the nature of the questions that he asked. And, and they weren't like, uh, like interrogatories or, or questions like, okay, I'm trying to get sensitive information out of you. No, these were questions that were really about life and they were genuine coming from a genuine place and, and, and thoughtful and I think that whoever dated him or got to know him would definitely have good conversations with him so I think that that was a really good green flag so there you have it these are the six thought-provoking questions I plan to do this series I think every Wednesday if you enjoy it uh, you can comment below. I know that this is a pretty new podcast, uh, and so there might not be any comments, but uh, I think I'll bring this back next Wednesday. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe at Real Kiana Canada. Again, that's Real Kiana Canada. You can also follow me on Twitter, x at Kiana underscore Canada. Again, that is Kiana underscore Canada. See you next time.